you know, I understand that, you know, after Fifty Shades, there's going to be all these franchises that try to copy it, but I think it's very important to remember that that original series was already based off of fan fiction anyway, and there's a reason why it's so terrible, and especially after this movie, they probably should just, like, stay as that, because as films, they're just not working at all. Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is going to be for another epic rant, which uh, I haven't really done one of these in a long time. I think the last one I did was for Playing With Fire back in December, and I haven't really done one since then, so it's cool to get back into these again. It's been a while since I've been able to do one, but... Because I haven't done one in a while, let me go over how these work. So unlike regular movie reviews, these videos are completely unedited aside from the rating and things like that. There's no poster. I'm not going to show any, like, pictures or anything like that because, you know, I like to make it raw. I like to make it unfiltered. Um... And this is just my space to just go on incoherent ramblings uh, about, uh, you know, usually incoherent ramblings uh, about a movie that I really do despise. Uh, one that, you know, usually is one of the worst of the year and uh, reasons why y'all should just not watch it. Uh, and of course, in this film, we're going to be talking about, in this video, we're going to be talking about After We Collided, which what this film is essentially about is honestly kind of confusing because... The, the film wants you to think that it's very much about uh, after the events of the first after film when Tri um, you know Tessa and uh, Hardin have basically decided to break things off. Uh, Hardin is going out on his own. We're starting to learn more about him while Tessa's also trying to balance like her own life. She's got this job at, like, this, uh, you know, she's got this job at this company now, and so she's trying to, like, balance all out, while also trying to sort of grapple with how she truly does feel about Harden, and if they really are compatible in any way. That's at least what they want you to think this movie's about, but, uh, yeah, needless to say, I was really dreading this film a lot. The first movie I found to be so cheesy and toxic, and I just was not a fan of it in any way, and knowing that they had a sequel on the way, which, honestly, I was, wasn't was surprised about, but I was surprised came out as quickly as it did, not just because of quarantine, but because I didn't really feel like the first film was really held in that high of regard, but apparently it was held high enough for them to make a second movie, and not only that, they made a second movie right away, and it's here now, it's After We Collided, and this film just looks so insanely stupid, I really had no idea where they were going to go with this, I was hoping it could be at least a little bit better, and uh, ho ho ho, the film we have instead is so much worse than I could have expected. I honestly can say that this is easily one of the worst sequels I think I've ever seen, it's one of the worst films I've seen in a very long time, that feels so just directionless, and just completely devoid of anything throughout, and I think I can safely say after this that this is easily one of the worst franchises I've ever watched. I mean, there's just, there's so much that doesn't work about this movie that is such a huge dumpster fire, but jumping right into the performances at first, which I mean, it, the first movie, everyone was terrible. I don't really think there was a single good performance in there, but that's nothing compared to the acting in this movie, because holy shit, it's on another level here, especially our main two actors, and Josephine Langford as an actress, um, you know, the first movie, she was incredibly flat, every single emotion from her just felt phoned in, but it's even worse this time around, I mean, she is just... Ugh, she's so flat in every single way possible. There isn't a single moment where she feels even somewhat convincing, whether it's her love for Harden or her disdain towards something that Harden's doing. You're just so annoyed by her. You don't enjoy her acting at all. She's not likable in the film, and I just really couldn't stand her here. And I also just don't think she's a very strong actress. I mean, and everything about her performance, like I said, it just feels so phony. A, the best example I can give is very early on in this movie, her character is supposed to be highly intoxicated. She's calling up someone, acting like she's drunk, and it is the most phoned-in, like, amateur shit you could possibly think of. Nothing about it seems even remotely similar to how people act when they're drunk. It's just so heightened and stupid and... 
I just hated it. I thought it was such a horrible performance in that way. And I know I said in the first movie, but like the Langford family, the talent is not, um, you know, something that is generational. They're like, Catherine is very talented for sure. She even showed, uh, you know, last month in Spontaneous, that, like she's a fantastic actress, but unfortunately, Josephine not happening so far. It does not rub off in the family, unfortunately. And that, that really does suck because I, I was hoping that she could be better in this movie, but if any anything she only convinced me that she just really is not a strong actress very much at all I really hated her in this film however compared to the work of Hero Finds Tiffin who for me is easily the worst in this movie um, it honestly is like it, it honestly isn't as bad because his performance is so over the top in the worst ways possible. Harding is someone who is already just a very unlikable character, but then the problem with uh, Tiffin as an actor is that nothing about his acting uh, feels authentic. Everything feels so... Um, just overly done. Any time that Harden is supposed to be upset, it's like, No! Tessa! What are you doing? Tessa! And it's like, oh no, this is what we're dealing with. Every single time he acts in this movie, um... It just feels so fake and so unconvincing, and it just really isn't working at all. And the problem is, there, Harden has a lot more to do in this movie than the first one, so they give him a lot more screen time, and it really just shows how terrible of an actor Tiffin really is. There Again, there isn't really a single moment in this movie for me that actually worked. You know, it's, it's one of those cases where you can tell that Tiffin was originally a model, and maybe he should just stick to that, because acting is definitely... Definitely not his strong suit. He is very much not good at it at all, and uh, unfortunately, we're going to be stuck with him for the next like few years. And hopefully, he gets better. But right now, that really is not the case. And the chemistry, once again, between these two is just non-existent in basically every way possible. The way these two look at each other, it just feels so forced. The way that these two look at each other, it just seems like they don't have any real chemistry. You don't understand why these two would care so much for each other. It just isn't really there, and I think that's the thing that really brings this film down. There's no chemistry there whatsoever, and I really just was so unconvinced by what they were doing throughout the whole film. So yeah, those two are horrible. They really do a horrible job, I think, at presenting these roles in a way that feels authentic or in a way that feels even somewhat uh, emotional, even somewhat... Um, you know, endearing in any way. But the rest of the cast really doesn't bode well either. Uh, a lot of people are going to look at this cast and see that Dylan Sprouts is in there and think maybe he's one of the highlights, and he's very much not. I mean, Dylan Sprouts in this film, I can't say how he is as an actor because I haven't really seen much of what he's done, but in this film, he could not be more bored um, in this role. You know, he's there to be this guy that is a potential love interest for Tessa, um... His name is Trevor, you know, he works in this, he's like her co-worker and things like that, and not only, and I understand, like, Trevor's supposed to be very awkward, but every single time Sprout speaks in this movie, he just seems like he doesn't want to be there. Every single line, he just seems so bored, and I honestly can't blame him, because the material he's working with is really boring. In fact, there's a portion of this movie where he's just, like, not there, and I jokingly said to my friends who I watched this with that, like, oh, he probably just, like, walked off set because he really was just that disinterested, but honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if that actually did happen, because because every single time he said something in this movie, it just really seemed like he did not want to be bothered. And again, I really can't blame him at all. So I thought his acting was pretty terrible too. Candace King is in here. She has absolutely nothing to work with. Shane Paul McGee is just as bad as he was in the first one. Selma Blair, let's talk about her. Selma Blair is really not in this as much as the first, thank God. The first one, she was like this overly controlling mother that was like telling her daughter what to do, treating her like she was still a teenager, and I just, uh, I couldn't stand her at all. She's only in this movie for like two scenes, but those two scenes that she has Oh my god, she's still really bad. Like, you're reminded just how terrible she is in this role, and I think she did a really bad job in this movie. Uh, this new character played by Anana Sarkis as well is so bad in this movie. Uh, she, at points, feels like she's in, like, a soap opera, um, and really just... 
Again, nothing about her is convincing. There is a scene in the third act, especially, that didn't make me laugh, but I can see a lot of people laughing at it just because of how horrible her acting was, and I thought she just did such a terrible job. She really is just playing, like, the other girl in Hardin's life, and it's just very unconvincing. The other really weird choice this film makes, though, in terms of the cast is that Two films in, they've already recast someone. They've recast uh, Hardin's parents entirely. In the first film, they were played by Jennifer Beals and Peter Gallagher. But here, they've bailed, which I honestly can't blame them, considering that, you know, these films are, uh, you know, pretty lackluster, to put it lightly. Here, they're played by Rob Estes and uh, Karima Westbrook. And it really does show. It really does show. Because it really does feel like they got these actors at the last second. They didn't really understand these roles. They didn't really understand who they were playing, really anything about these characters, but they threw them in there, and we have very amateur and very just inexperienced uh, performers here. And again, none of it really is convincing. The entire cast, just nobody is sticking out here. Nobody really seems like they want to give that performance that could maybe elevate this film. It just is an entire disaster in terms of acting. But for me, that's nothing in terms of the, you know, um, compared to the directing and the screenplay. The directing to this film, look, I've seen a lot of films that feel, you know, like they aren't well directed that you know they feel like the tone isn't there but oh my god this film has to be one of the most directionless things I think I've ever seen and I don't know if it's because Roger Cumble did not direct the first film and I mean Jenny Gage's directing was really bad in the first one but here Cumble has no idea what he wants this film to be is he trying to make this like a very dark and like romantic thriller is he trying to make this more lighthearted? is he trying to make this more of like something that's endearing he just has no idea how to go about it from scene to scene the tone t uh, tends to change on a dime and I think it really is because Cumble just really had no experience with how to handle this story. He didn't know how to direct this film in a way that felt authentic. He didn't know how to direct this film in a way that felt natural for what was going on. But honestly, when you hire the director of things like College Road Trip and Furry Vengeance, which obviously are not similar to this. Yes, he did Cruel Intentions like back in 1999, but like are we really that surprised that this film turned out as horribly directed as it did? No, we're really not. And clearly it's bad enough that, like, he's not coming back for the next two. They already have another director in line for the next two. Yes, there are two more films after this for some reason. Uh, but Cumble, again, just seems to have zero clue on how to direct this movie. And it really does show here. The screenplay to this film, though, holy shit. Um, look... In terms of franchises, I feel like this film has a lot of similarities to Fifty Shades Darker, but at least in Fifty Shades Darker, I felt like some of those plot threads actually went somewhere. In this film, virtually every single story choice that they make goes absolutely nowhere. In fact, like I said, the plot to this movie is not really the plot to this movie. That's the plot for like the first 15 minutes of the film. It takes literally 15 minutes for Tessa and Hardin to get back together and and start smashing, and unfortunately, that's what this entire film seems to be comprised of, and honestly, I blame no one else but Anna Todd for this screenplay, because she is the person that has made these Wattpads. She is the person who created this whole thing in the first place, and she's so heavily involved with, um, this project, and I'm assuming had a real say in, like, how everything went, and even though, yes, you have someone else, uh, Mario, uh, Celia, uh, Celia, 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 something like that, Celia, uh, I don't know how you pronounce his last name, but, um, she seemed like she made every single choice in this movie, and because of that, you know, because of her making the Wattpad, she does not know how to translate it to a film. The only thing she seems to be sure of is that these two characters like to have sex a lot. And I mean a lot. They really double down on that in this movie. And every single time that they do, it feels so dispassionate. It feels so forced. And it just gets so tiring after a while because it seems like that's all these characters do. There is literally...
literally a moment where they have sex in the shower, and then they end up going to work, and then literally a few seconds later, they try to have sex at work, and that just tells me that, like, there was no outline for this film in terms of story. It really felt like the script said, like, every 15 minutes, these characters need to have sex. At least, it very much felt that way, at least. Like, it just, it felt like in terms of story, there just really wasn't much to work with here. And the thing is, I think there was actual potential, because you start off the film and you think they're trying to get more into Hardin's character, but if anything, they just make Hardin that much more unlikable as a character. We get into this other relationship that he has with this girl, who he is a complete dick to. He wants nothing to do, you know, he really, is. she's really just kind of like a rebound for him, not really someone that he pays much attention to at all, but she clearly clearly has feelings for him. He's got this whole, like, side thing going on with, like, his father that's not really well explored. And then he has this weird, like, obsession with Tessa. But the problem is the film does not portray it in a way that feels like it is aware that Hardin is a bad dude. It portrays it in a way where it seems like this romance is actually somewhat endearing. There actually is something good about it. And Honestly, two films in, I see zero positive qualities uh, in terms of this relationship. I see zero good things coming out of this relationship. You know, they're literally... They're, and also, Tessa as a character is so confusing in this movie. Where she stands in her relationship with Hardin, it's just, I don't understand it. It feels like from scene to scene, her attitude changes. One second, she just wants to be with Hardin because she wants to have sex. Okay, fine, I understand that. But then a couple scenes later, she's saying she wants nothing to do with him. Then suddenly, she does want to be with him. Then suddenly, she doesn't want to. And it's like, what do you want as a character? And I understand, I, I'd understand if that was, like, her dilemma throughout the movie. Like, there were good qualities and bad qualities to Hardin, but it feels like even though she wants nothing to do with him, she just keeps pulling herself back in. It's not like he keeps pulling her back in. She just finds herself in these situations and for some reason just decides to stay with him. And I just don't understand that choice at all. There's a whole sequence where, like, she's meeting, like, his family and she has to pretend to, like, be his girlfriend. And I'm just like, why are you putting yourself in this situation? Why are you associating yourself with this guy who you literally said you wanted space from. I just, I don't understand what they're doing in terms of this relationship. The romance in this film is just so toxic. It's so ridiculous. And the only person who seems to have any clue that there's something off about this is Dylan Sprouts' character who, uh, you know, Sprouts' uh, lack of passionate acting aside, um, he is really the only character in this movie that feels somewhat rational. He's the only character that feels like he has a brain. And even at that, there's a weird plot thread with him that they introduce, like, in the middle of the movie... And it really doesn't go anywhere. You're just kind of sitting there like, what was the point of this? What were they trying to say there? And that's what I mean by, aside from the characters' sex lives, they have no idea what to do with anyone. There's just so many plot threads that happen that go absolutely nowhere. There is one moment, especially in the third act of the film, and this might be the most egregious of them all. It involves uh, Tessa, involved in what should be this, like, a big moment for her as a character. It should be something that, like, changes the film drastically. It should be this really dramatic moment. But it's played in such a lame and almost, like, ineffective way. Like, it feels like it just kind of happens, and then they drop it. They, like, skip through it, and then suddenly everything's fine again, and I'm like, what was the point of this? What happened here? And... I have to just assume that they realized they had to introduce all these plot threads in order to keep the film as long as it could be. Um, because, again, it just doesn't seem like any of the story threads are going anywhere. There's a plot line involving, like... Uh, her mother and, like, her uh, stepdad, and that doesn't really seem to go anywhere. Like I said, there's a plot line with Hardin and his father that doesn't really seem to go much of anywhere. It's resolved very quickly. There is a plot line involving um, 
Tessa's like co-workers and that doesn't really go much of anywhere there's just there's so many things introduced in here and you're just wondering what is the point you always feel like the film is building up to something but once it builds up to that something it just is dropped immediately this happens a lot in this movie and I just I didn't understand any of what they were trying to do here story-wise it just didn't make any sense to me and also the dialogue in this movie is truly so atrocious and it's not just because it's a bad screenplay it's because of the fact that this film is in fact rated r and you can tell they're really trying to push it in the best way they possibly can and it just fails on every level i mean they're really using an excessive use of like uh fuck and things like that um they really are trying to go all in on the sex scenes, and it just feels so pandering. It feels so forced. Like, they felt like the only way to constitute an R rating is just to be as raunchy as possible, but none of it feels necessary. None of it feels like it actually needs to be in this film, and it just, again, it, it just really isolates the viewer it really makes the viewer not want anything to do with any of what's going on and uh i think it just made things worse in the long run so yeah the screenplay here is just absolutely terrible there's so many things that just i i'm scratching my head about what the point of it was and it's just absolutely one of the worst i've seen in a long time the cinematography here as well is just not very good there are points of this movie that very much feel like a music video there are points of this movie that feel almost like a trailer and it really is due to the way certain scenes are filmed especially when it comes to the sex scenes they're so long and played out and it just it, it feels like you could remove it from the movie entirely if you take the sex scenes out this movie is actually very short and the cinematography is a big reason for that the score as well is just so cheesy and stupid and i couldn't stand any of the uh, music in this movie. The soundtrack as well, there's so many songs that they play and they feel so out of place. It doesn't feel like it works with the mood of the scene. It just is very jarring in that way and I don't think they did a good job with that. The editing though in this movie, um, similar to the editor for Antebellum, um, uh, the editor here, Anita Brandt Burgoyne, I legitimately don't think knows how to edit movies because you will notice literally the first five minutes of this movie, there's something wrong with the editing here. We'll go from like this really intense scene with Harden to like this lighthearted scene of like Tessa going to her job for the first time. And it just feels like two completely different movies throughout. The tone switches on a dime, but the editing also switches on a dime. It just, there are scenes that are cut off off rapidly. There are scenes that are resolved in a way where it feels like things are missing. Uh, there's tons of like time jumps and things like that. The editing is just so horrible to this movie. It's so badly edited. It's done in a way that feels legitimately broken. There are points in this movie that really does feel broken. It feels like entire sections of this movie are missing, and I don't know if they actually are, but it certainly feels that way, and I think that really does hurt this film overall. And then the ending of this movie. Oh my god, the ending of this movie. Look, the film is already so haphazard as it is in terms of plot threads, but the ending to this movie has to be one of the worst cliffhangers I think I've ever seen in a film like this. The way this film wraps up, it just is so desperate to continue this franchise. It's so desperate for it to go anywhere, and the way it ends is so laughably stupid, the way they decide to wrap things up here, um, because it really does feel like everything is resolved but there's just this one little thing that's left to do and honestly considering how little of what happened in the first one mattered in this movie i'm I, I would be shocked if it actually goes anywhere meaningful i would be shocked if it goes anywhere actually interesting because this film, that certainly was not the case at all. If anything, it just went in the worst directions possible. It really just felt like they had no idea what to do with the story, and the ending, I think, sums that up more than ever. And I can't believe that there's two films left. There's two films left. What more can you do with this franchise? What more can we dive into? I just don't understand it. I don't understand what else they want to do here. I don't understand what the point of these movies are. I don't even think they understand how toxic a lot of this relationship is. This is not a healthy relationship. Like I said, it's portrayed in a sort of endearing way. No, it's toxic. It's emotionally abusive. It's just... 
Ah, uh, it's just, it's the worst. Harden is such a unlikable guy who's constantly telling Tessa what she can and can't do. She seems so confused as to what she wants about him. The acting here is terrible. Just, guys, After We Collided is one of the biggest pieces of shit that I have seen all year. It's a film that legitimately feels so broken. It feels directionless. So many plot threads just are are started and ended haphazardly. It seems to have no clear idea what to do with any of these characters whatsoever. It really just feels like a film that well is being made because it was based off a of Wattpad and they need a sequel because everything has to be a franchise now and this film just had no business continuing whatsoever. The first one was already bad enough but this one really is so much worse in every way possible. After We Collide is easily one of the worst films of the entire year and I'm absolutely going to give it overall an F. <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck you! Oh my god, uh, it's, it's been a while since I've seen a movie this bad and reviewed a movie this bad, uh, but like I said, I'm excited to get back into these again, because I haven't done an epic rant in quite a while. Uh, if you guys have seen this movie, I mean, I guess let me know what you guys think of it, uh, but please, there's other films out there right now, try to avoid this if you can, it's really not worth watching at all, unless you just, like, want to make fun of something with your friends, it's really not worth watching, um, but either way, guys, that's it for this video, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you guys saw this movie. I'll lift your thoughts, and we'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.